To finish our chapter on modeling and animation, let's look at a rigging tool built into the skin modifier. We have the ability now to weight the skin using voxel and heat map solvers. And this will bypass the ordinary skin envelopes completely. And it could accelerate your workflow because it allows you to quickly and easily establish new initial vertex weights on a skin character. We'll go ahead and add a skin modifier to our character, select the body mesh, go to the modify panel, and from the modifier list, choose skin. We need to add the bones. Here we go in this parameters rollout. You'll see bones add, click on that add button. In the dialog that comes up, we want to select the hips and all of its children. We can click on the arrow to expand a little bit of the hierarchy here. When I click hips, I only select that bone. I want to select all of its children as well. Go up to the select menu and enable select children. That is going to stay on from now on. So if I click on something, all of its children will be selected. Even the next time I open this dialog, I'll click on hips, select all its children, and then click select. Now all the bones have been added to the list here. We can test out the initial skinning with envelopes to make it easier for us to do that. Let's just freeze the character mesh. It's still selected. I can right click and get the quad menu and choose freeze selection. And now when I hover my mouse over the bones, they will light up with pre-selection highlighting. I'll go down here and hover over the femur to select that joint at the knee. And then with that joint selected, press the E key on the keyboard to get the rotate tool and rotating in local reference coordinate system. And as you can see, we're having some skinning issue with the vertices on the left leg being attached to the bone on the right leg. Again, that's with the default envelope skinning. Let's undo that with control Z. I want to select the mesh again to do that. I'll need to use the scene explorer. Go ahead and click on Scene Explorer, open that up, select the body mesh. Back in the Modify panel, we can enable Edit Envelopes at the top here. And to make it easier to see what we're selecting, let's jump into Wireframe with F3. Drag a rectangle around that joint to select it, and we're able to see the skin weighting on the vertices. Let's get in very close there with the wheel, and we can now see the envelope. And this is the old school way of editing the influences. You can click on the radius here of that outer envelope. It's highlighted in magenta. And then I can drag, in this case, in the X direction to change the influence of that particular bone. That's the old method. Now the new method is going to be found lower in the panel here. Let's turn off Edit Envelopes. Scroll down a bit. And under Weight Properties, we now have a section labeled Weight Solver. These new weighting tools will operate on selected vertices or on entire objects. In this case, I don't have any vertices selected, so this is going to apply to all of the vertices on the object. The new weight solvers are also destructive. Once you execute the command, the vertex weighting is baked, and the envelopes no longer have any influence. Let's look at the voxel method first. Click on the Browse button to open up the dialog. And we have some options here. Fall off is the sharpness or smoothness of transition where two bones overlap in influence. And if you want a sharper effect, increase this value. It ranges between 0 and 1. I'm going to set it to a value of 0 0.8. The max influence is a limit on the number of bones that are allowed to affect a certain vertex. If it's set to zero, then the software decides. I'm going to explicitly say I only want three bones to affect a certain vertex. The resolution is the overall quality. I'll increase that up to 512. Use winding numbers will also increase the quality a little bit. Turn off envelope gizmos will just hide the envelope display in the viewport. Whether this switch is on or off, the envelopes will be disabled anyway because the vertex weights are being baked in this process. When I click Apply, it'll take a moment. We'll see an update down here. And when that Apply button goes dark, then that means the operation has completed. And now I can close the dialog. We'll go back to Testing. I'll select this joint or bone here. Hit E to rotate. And then see what happens. 
So we still have a little bit of residual influence here, but it is better than what we had with the default envelope method of skin weighting. I'll undo that. We of course still have the ability to paint the skin weights in the usual fashion. We're not going to cover all that in this brief movie. Finally, we have another method for establishing the initial weights, and that's using heat map. We'll go back to selecting the body and back in its modified panel. We can scroll down once again to the weight solver and choose heat map. And once again, click the ellipsis or browse button, open up the dialog, and we have the same controls, just fewer of them. We'll set the fall off to 0.8, number of max influences to three, and click apply. And this uses a different algorithm that's surface-based, whereas the voxel one is volume-based, of course. And this one's faster, it's completed. We can hit close. Once we've applied the heat map skin weighting, then we can deselect the character body and then select one of those bones once again and test it. Hit the E key and rotate. And we can see that the heat map is actually the best in this case. We're getting no influence on that other leg. Very cool. So that is a simple overview of the options that we have for applying initial skin weights using voxel and heat map solvers. That's the end of our chapter on modeling and animation.